Thank you for joining me today. Let us continue reading this book by J.A. Wiley, Jesuitism. We are now on chapter 19. This is the second part of our reading here on page 106. Our Father in heaven. Oh, Father, we need your Holy Spirit. We need your grace. Thank you, and we receive it today by faith. In the name of your Son, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. J. Wiley wrote this second paragraph. As in the case of an individual uh, patient, so in that of a nation, when stricken down, the first step towards a cure is to ascertain what really is the malady. Ireland is the prey of some secret and virulent distemper. What is it? Our statesmen and politicians have been keeping their wits on work for more than half a century to find out Ireland's malady. It has baffled them all. The riddle remains unread. How many volumes had been written? How many speeches had been delivered? How many committees of inv investigation have sat? How much philosophy and philanthropy had been expanded? in the task of searching out the hidden cause of her mischief. It is a mystery at this to this hour, when statemen speak of the little island in the Atlantic parted from us by a silvery streak of sea, alas, so narrow would it wear a thousand times broader. It is with awe seeing in Ireland a sphinx a hundred times more terrible than the sphinx of classic story. And who, like her prototype prof Profound propones her riddle to each successive British cabinet, and on their failing to solve it, tears them in pieces. What is the reason of this? One may miss the solution by too much as well as by too little ingenuity. Our statesmen had been digging 50 fathoms down in search of what is on the surface. They have been looking to the ends of the earth for what lies at their feet and which they might have for the picking up. Would they but condescend to stoop? They had been exhausting the mysteries of statecraft and the powers of philosophy in discovering what any man who has sense enough to count his ten fingers could tell them. Why is this? The truth is our statesmen do not wish to find out the secret. They know very well where and in what it lies, but they sedulously avoid turning their eyes in that direction lest they should see it and be compelled to confess it and forced to grapple with it. That is the reason why the cause of Ireland is still a mystery. True at first sight, Ireland's case is a frightfully complicated one. It would seem as if all the furies which delight to vex and torment nations had come tripping to that shore and taking up their abode on this unhappy island. Only let us think what an assemblage of diverse and hideous ills we find here. Here, keeping out of view, the northern quarter of the island is the ignorance of the Zulu, the, the filth of the Hottentot, the slavery of the Turk, and the lawlessness of the Kurd. Here are undrained bugs and plot lands, hovels of mud as if tools were yet to be invented. Here are arguous, feverous famines and men stiff to the lips in poverty, clotting themselves with rag and subsisting on the coarsest food. Here are secret societies and lawful arts, prowling assassins, rapines, seditions, treasons, conspiracies, and murders. Here the cry of suffering goes up night and day, and they hear a spirit of vengeance like a great furnish, furnace burns continually. This is the Ireland of the present hour. The evils that make up this deplorable picture are so numerous and so diverse, and one despairs of being able to trace them all to one root, and yet to one root may be all be traced. Let us take an individual patient. From head to heel, he is one hideous blotch of running source. You cannot touch him with the tip of your finger without giving him exquisite pain, so covered is he with disease. But the skillful physician will tell us that these open wounds, lots of and painful though they be, are only symptoms that the disease of which they are, the outcome is one, and that is its seat is within. Ireland, Blouched with all over the manifold, with manifold mischiefs, has one great malady. And that malady is the cause of all the wounds, bruises, and 
putrefying sores, with which from the crown of the head to the sole of the foot, like another sunken land in olden, olden time, it is covered. The whole of I... The whole case of Ireland may be stated in a few words. A system dominant over conscience and reason. A system at war with industry, order, and liberty. Binds down the people in serfdom and misery. The priests of that system are discontented because they are not dominant. And the peasantry are insurrectionary because misled by priestly declamation. They mistake their oppressor and cry out against England. The evils of Ireland are multiform and manifold, but their root is one. And that root is popery. We will read the next paragraph on page 118, the third paragraph specifically, the next time. May God our Father do bless you. And His only begotten divine Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious to you now and forevermore. Amen.